Hey everyone, Ari Mopor here, and today I'm gonna show you how to get started with the Arduino Uno R4. This is the latest version of the Arduino Uno. It is packed with a whole bunch of new hardware features on it. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, a new ARM Cortex processor, it's got an LED matrix array, and it's got a whole bunch of other peripherals that we're going to be showcasing and demonstrating in order to get started with this board. So take out your Arduino Uno R4 and join me and we can get started. Okay, of course, before we get started, I want to first introduce you to the Arduino IDE. We've seen this before in the past. It's actually gotten much, much better. I really like the new IDE. It, it hasn't fundamentally changed, but in the back end, the way that it pulls all the different libraries and automatically updates and, and does a bunch of things, which you probably wouldn't notice unless you're into that type of stuff. Um, it just kind of works a little bit more seamlessly. So on their website, arduino.cc, uh, and then you can go to software and download the Arduino IDE version two. So this is 2.3.4. In the past, we've used version one. So I, I really like uh, the update. And as you can see, I'm on my Windows. I'm going to be running this example on Windows, not on Linux, which I usually do. But this pertains also to Linux. You can do the same thing, install it on Linux, as you can see, and install it on Mac OS. So I go ahead and download, and I install it. And I've already done this on my computer. Also, when you bring up the Arduino IDE for the first time, especially on Windows, it's going to ask you for a bazillion permissions to click yes. Just blindly click yes and open up your firewall to all sorts of security risks. I'm just kidding. Um, obviously, read what it's trying to do. It wants to open up different connections, different ports. It wants to install different libraries. It's going to require elevated permissions to do that. Follow it, you know judiciously just make sure you're checking <clears throat> everything that it's doing and then finally once you plug in your arduino uh, uno r4 which again remember it's usb-c enabled so you need a usb-c cable that plugs into your computer not a micro usb cable so usb-c cable you plug it in and it'll automatically detect that install whatever necessary drivers and then it'll again try to install some new libraries so you'll have to probably uh, hit yes to a few prompts so once you've got that all up and running you should have your arduino interface over here at the top there's no more going to tools and selecting the port and all of this you can just do it right here which is really nice it automatically detects all your com ports uh, so that's like a little kind of gooey update Another thing, because this is running ARM Cortex instead of the Atmega, it's installing the ARM Cortex bootloader and everything uh, in, in the background for you. Again, that's part of the clicking yes multiple times. And then uh, we have the original you know, buttons, the verify, that, which is basically compile, and then the upload, which is uploading it directly to your device. So really, all you need to do is plug in your Arduino select the one that pops up over here make sure all the libraries are installed and then we're up and running and ready to go so now that you have your environment completely set up what we want to do is kind of showcase some examples of how the arduino uno r4 is a little bit different than some of the other previous arduinos especially the atmega version of that and uh i, I just want to show some three very simple examples that kind of resonate with me obviously you should experiment with other examples experiment and post them uh show them showcase them post links to the video over here so we can see in the comments what you worked on and if you look i've actually asked chat gpt to generate a bunch of examples for me which is really nice some of them were good some of them did not work and we had to iterate on them this one kind of out of the box worked a little bit this is going to showcase a dac which i'm going to show you in a minute digital to analog converter this kind of worked uh we're gonna go through that example another one was the led matrix so there's an onboard led matrix 12 by 8 and uh you can print a whole bunch of things on that this i wanted to print hello this took quite a few iterations to get it to work. And then the Wi-Fi pretty much worked right out of the box. So we're going to go through each example. The first example is my DAC sine wave. And over here, as you can see, 
Uh, it's very, very simple. There's a setup function, which does nothing. And then uh, we run in a loop. So all we're doing is we're just utilizing the digital to analog converter. So we can create uh, using uh, a series of numbers between zero and 255 that represents an analog voltage. Now, in order to have done this on the older Arduinos, there was no onboard DAC. So what you had to do was use a PWM, a pulse width modulator, and then use an RC circuit to be able to kind of like mimic um, a digital to analog converter. And that's how you did like some of your fa early fading examples, if you remember when Arduinos first came out, uh, and some other like DAC examples. This now has a built-in DAC, which is super great. Um, really, really nice. The timing that it got with the delay, it initially told me to set the delay to 100 microseconds, and that ended up with about a 15 hertz wave. So in order to achieve a 28.5 hertz, which was kind of arbitrary, but that's what we decided together, ChatGPT and I, uh, in order to get that, you need to have a delay of roughly 24 microseconds. So I'm going to put this code in. I'm going to, this is going to compile and upload at the same time. <clears throat> and I've got, basically, I've got my oscilloscope plugged in one, the ground to the ground on the Arduino. And then A0 is going to be my probe, my oscilloscope probe. And I've actually got a web control of my oscilloscope here. And as you can see here, the frequency is 27.8, 28.3. It kind of oscillates back and forth, but around 28 hertz. Um, voltage, uh, peak to peak, as you can see over here, the period, everything else, um, as you can see over here. So this over here is, is essentially putting out that sine wave for us by stepping little bits and then holding, stepping. So uh, voltage at, let's say, you know, at this point and then holding at 0 0.1 and then waiting uh, some, a bunch of microseconds and then at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 until it can, kind of steps through and builds a sine wave. And you can do this in, you know, a couple lines, which is kind of cool. So that's the example with the uh, oscilloscope and, and validating that the DAC works. So I, I kind of thought that was really neat because that you couldn't easily do that right out of the box with uh, the original Arduinos. All right. Let's go take a look at the LED scrolling example. This one's a little bit longer and I'm going to have to show it to you. So I'm going to unplug my oscilloscope. This one's a little bit longer. I'm going to kind of walk you through it. So this uh, you can use. And so we, there's an onboard LED matrix array. I'm going to show you. So if you can see right over here, these are all LEDs, 12 by 8. And so what we are going to do is we're going to try to print a uh, scrolling hello that kind of scrolls by on the LED matrix, which is um, which is always fun. And uh, so in order to do hello, you need to be able to tell it, you know, what what LEDs represents a letter. So in this case, in the array, this is saying this is what an H is. This is an E. This is an L. This is an O. And again, we're going to print two L's. Uh, and then this is the array in which we are going to be using. And then we have spacing in between each letter. And so what this is doing is setting up that whole matrix and then eventually kind of shifting in and moving through uh, as we go through to kind of create this like bitmap. And uh, it's a little long. You can go through the code and or you can use ChatGPT to explain it. This took like maybe seven or so iterations with ChatGPT 4.0 to get correctly. Um, so that was a little annoying, but it wasn't too bad. I had to help it a little bit. But uh, now we're going to compile and load it. And so it's going to be a little bit hard to see here. But if you can see, so it's going to print H, E, L, L, O again. H, E, L, L, O. Now it's not like a true scrolling where it goes back and forth. You see it kind of just starts again. That's a little glitchy, but not bad for uh, AI generated code. So that was kind of cool. Last example is we want to showcase another feature that's on the board that you can't see. It's not an LED array, but it's onboard Wi-Fi. Now it's taken the Arduino Foundation. Oh, let's see. 
I started using the Arduinos probably about close to a little less than 20 years ago. And, uh, and it's, um, and it's taken a really long time for them to get good, solid Wi-Fi on board that's just totally transparent to you. There was the Arduino Yoon, um, but it's taken a really long time, and that's been a major limitation. The Node MCU, which I've done some videos on, that is uh, that came with Wi-Fi on board. That, that board itself was really, really cheap. We were able to do some IoT-enabled projects with that. So it's really time that Arduino just bake it right into their basic Uno platform. And I'm really, really stoked about this. I'm super happy that they're able to do this. So uh, I'm going to show you, basically what we're doing is we're creating a super duper lightweight web server. So when I'm going to address the Arduino um, Uno <clears throat> through a web browser, it's going to respond with hello world. And so, what are the practical ramifications of this? You can now set up a web server that's um, very classic example is uh, a server that is uh, monitoring uh, all sorts of like a weather uh, uh, weather device that's basically monitoring the wind and it has a bunch of sensors, a weather station. And so what you can do is either A, the weather station can send data over MQTT to your like Adafruit MQTT server. I've done some examples and tutorials on that as well in the past. Or you can just have a standalone server. Like maybe I want to hit it from my phone and say, oh, what's the weather at home? What's the weather in front of my house? How much wind, you know, is coming around? And, and this is connected to all those, those uh, devices. So maybe I just want to hit a web server and get the information rather than subscribing to some MQTT or some third party server that it's pushing to. So this is kind of, you know, nice. It's cute. It's a nice, cute little web server. So first we need to put our secret SSID, of course, in, and this is very insecure because I am going to be hard coding it at the top that I'm going to be uploading. Now you can do other things with compile flags, with text files, you can upload things. There are ways to make this more secure, of course, and we're going to be testing this now. So now we go to the monitor and we need to choose uh, 115200. And now let's just uh, let's start the serial monitor again. We're going to restart. And actually, what I will do is I will unplug it and start it again, just so we can really start fresh. So this should be loaded directly on. We'll do another upload just in case, just to refresh it. And we'll go to the serial monitor once it's loaded. Here we go. And so it tells me that it's connected to Wi-Fi and then this is the IP address. So now I can go to my IP address. There we go. Hello world, Arduino web server. So <clears throat> again, I can gather information. Let's say it's a weather station, something like that. And I can peruse through. Obviously it doesn't have a lot of storage on it. You can do like an SD card shield um, or you can add something to it so it could pull um, static web pages or to make all sorts of fancy uh, visualizations. You can use um, uh, JS libraries in order to <clears throat> bring that in to make nice visualizations so you don't have to store a lot of code on the device itself. There are ways to skirt around the limitations on size as a web server, but for the basic fundamental concepts, you can gather the information and then print uh, some information as a self-hosted web server. So this is kind of really neat. I really enjoyed um, putting together these examples. So if you want, all these examples can be found on my repository, gitlab.com forward slash embedded dash designs forward slash Arduino dash Uno dash R4 dash showcase. But if you want, you can just go to gitlab.com forward slash Amapur 
and you can look at all my contributed projects and you will see over here Arduino Uno for showcase. That's it. And those are three examples that really kind of demonstrate some of the new capabilities of the Arduino Uno R4 and uh, definitely post some of your examples that you're playing around with. Even if you, you remixed some of these examples, post it in the chat, in the comments. I'd love to see what you put together. So today we looked at the Arduino Uno R4. We demonstrated a few different capabilities that you can only find in this new version of the board. We looked at putting together a digital to analog converter. We created a little sine wave and looked at that on the oscilloscope. Then after that, we demonstrated how to do a little scrolling hello going back and forth on the LED array right over here. And then lastly, we put together a web server where you could hit the Arduino Uno in case you have something like a weather station or other examples where you wanna hit the Arduino and grab some information over the internet. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the rest of the videos on this channel. You can subscribe and definitely hit that like button. Thanks for watching.